No matter the video project, be it a narrative film, a documentary, an Instagram reel, or a YouTube video, the manipulation of the moving image, or filmmaking, is an art form. And to many filmmakers, editing is not only a pillar of filmmaking, it's the backbone. And over the last 30 years, nonlinear video editors have become the standard tool to edit a film. Over that time, many NLEs have come and gone, but Avid Media Composer, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere Pro, in all their variations, have remained dominant. I have years of experience editing in each one of those systems. All of them are great, all of them have their strengths and their weaknesses, and all of them have things I like and dislike about them. Countless films, commercials, news stories, social media videos have been cut with these tools throughout the years. One thing I dislike about all three of them, and that is one of the big subjects about this video today, is that all three of those are Mac OS and Windows only. I want to be able to use Linux in every aspect of filmmaking. And that is one of the driving forces behind this channel. This video is part one in a long series of me exploring video editing and post-production on Linux. No matter which system you choose, learning the art of storytelling and the art of cinema is extremely important in, on your creative journey. One amazing resource I've loved for a long time is Skillshare. I'm proud to say Skillshare is my newest sponsor and is sponsoring this video. I have a long history as a Skillshare member. And right now I'm working on my graphic design skills so I can make the zines I'm working on look amazing. Right now I'm taking the class Graphic Design Basics, Core Principles for Visual Design, taught by Ellen Lepton and Jennifer Cole Phillip. Powerful tool and page layout. They give structure to the page and they increase the efficiency of the design process. This class is a great introduction to graphic design or a refresher on the foundational ideas such as scale, framing, hierarchy, and grids. Watching this class and practicing design layouts prepares me to work on the upcoming zines. This is just the tip of the iceberg though. Skillshare has countless graphic design classes I love, along with classes on writing, photography, music theory, and more. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today on upgrading your creative skills. Like I said, this video is part one in what will be a long series on me exploring video editing on Linux and post-production on Linux. This just being part one, I will just list the video editors I'm gonna explore that work on Linux. Some videos that I make in the future on these video editing systems will be deep dives and some will be just quick overviews and reviews of them. But before I get to the list, I need your help. I need to make sure that this list is comprehensive and that as I make these video editing and post-production Linux videos, I need to make sure I'm not missing any tools that are available. So let me know if I've missed anything, anything that should be added to this list that I can make videos on in the future. Also, let me know if there are very specific aspects of video editing and post-production that you wanna see covered on this channel. So in no specific order, here are the list of video editing systems available on Linux. Number one is Caden Live. Caden Live might be the most popular video editing system on Linux. It's free and open source. You can install it through your distro's repo, through Flatpak and an app image. It's also available on Mac and Windows as well. I've used Caden Live a decent amount so far and love it. And I can't wait to dive deeper into Caden Live. Number two is Resolve. Resolve is proprietary as you probably know. There's a free version and a paid version or what they call the studio version. It only installs by the installer that they provide. Again, just like some, with some of the other systems on here, it's available on Mac and on Windows. Resolve is extremely powerful. It is known for its color grading tools, which are some of the best in the industry. But over the last 10 years, it has developed a really, really strong video editing system. As we're back in the day, it was strictly color, color correction. Now it has video editing, effects and motion graphics built in, as well as audio tools all built into the, into the same piece of software, which is amazing. Number three is Lightworks. Lightworks is another piece of proprietary software. It also offers free and paid versions. The difference between the free and paid versions are much more dramatic than Resolve. It offers install files for Red Hat variation distros and Debian distros. It also offers Flatpaks, a Flatpak and Snap now. 
It's also available on Mac and Windows as well, another cross-platform system. Lightworks has been used to cut Hollywood films, so it's a very, very capable tool. Um, it's, it's unique in how it approaches things, so it, the learn, there is a bit of a learning curve if you're coming from something like Premiere Pro, but it's a very, very powerful, powerful editing system. The next handful of tools I'm not extremely familiar with, but again, this is a list of stuff I'm going to learn and explore. The next one is Shotcut. Shotcut is another free and open source piece of software. It has a flat pack, app image, snap, and is available through your distro's repos as well. It is Linux only. The next app on the list is Cinelera. Cinelera is Linux only. It's free and open source. Over the last couple of years, I think they converted to distributing it strictly through an app image. Next up is the Olive Video Editor. This is interesting because as I was doing all the pre-production for this video, I noticed that the website basically uh, was paused for right now. I don't know what the status of this project is, but as of a few months ago when I was playing around with it, it seemed like it was off to a great start. I hope the project continues. I think it has a lot of promise. Right now, Olive Editor, the Olive Editor stays on the list until I learn that if it's, until I learn otherwise, if it's dead, then maybe we will avoid making videos about it. I wanna concentrate on things that you can download and use and hopefully that have a future. Next up is Flowblade. Flowblade, again, is another free and open source tool. It's another Linux only tool. It has a lot of promise. I played around with it enough to know that I'm, I'm excited about the possibilities of Flowblade. You can install it through your distro's repo or through Flatpak. OpenShot is next. OpenShot is cross-platform Linux, Mac, and Windows. It's free and open source. And the Linux install options are flat through Flatpak and App Image. The next one on the list is Blender. Now, Blender has had a, a video sequencer or video editor built in for quite a while. My initial experience with it has been limited and I feel like it's missing a couple key things, but it's changing so rapidly that it needs to be on the list and I need to keep an eye on it because it's extremely close to being a complete video editing system. As you, you're probably familiar with Blender, so you know how to install it. You can install it through Flatpak, uh, Snap, and your distro's repos. Again, it's free and open source, probably one of the most popular free and open source pieces of software. It's available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. And if you don't know Blender, check it out for many things beyond video editing graphics, of course. The next one and last one is PityV. I can't, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's free and open source, another Linux only app, and is available to install through a flat pack. The purpose behind this video, again, is to show you the list, to get you thinking about some of these options to get your feedback to see if I missed anything. The next videos from here on out will be either deep dives into each one of these, there'll be reviews or tips and tricks on these pieces of software. So I need your feedback to make sure that I'm not missing anything or if there's any specific things you need demonstrated, let me know. Some of these pieces of software I've tried before, some I'm using right now on a regular basis and some I need to learn and I can't wait to, to learn more about them and share that with you. But again, this journey of exploring video editing on Linux and post-production, along with all the other creative things I'm exploring with this channel, I need your feedback. I rely on your feedback. And it's very important to make sure that this channel is extremely useful for everyone who wants to use Linux to create art and video and media. So again, I thank every one of you for watching. I appreciate all my subscribers. If you watch this video and made it this far, I invite you to like and subscribe and share. It helps the channel out tremendously. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.